Um, just wanted to start that off and um, it's the 11th of July, open source Sunday verdicts, Merlage's meeting. So yeah, you recently, uh, Adrian sent through a file of recent IC50 determination against the enamine compounds. If you are happy to talk about that, that would be really great. Okay, uh, right, let's, let's get this going. Screen. Your connection seems pretty solid now. <laughs> I know, uh, right. Right, can we see that? Yes. Okay, great. So um, by way of quick brief introduction, we screened an amine library and to cut a very long story short, we identified 11 extra members of that library which appeared to be MERD inhibitors. Um, they were characterized at single concentrations of uh, compound. So there's no way of knowing exactly what the potency is or, they, or if they um, have any unusual behavior with respect to the compounds themselves. So we've started doing IC50s. Um, We've completed the data collection and um, on those 11 compounds, and I'm working my way through uh, computing the data. And so these, these are the first five. So um, things you don't want to see. So this is an IC50 of a molecule called K16 from uh, one of the enamine plates. Um, it has an IC50 of 167 micromolar, but if you look at the shape of the profile, it's extremely sigmoid. Um, you can measure the sigmoidicity by virtue of the Hill coefficient, uh, where a perfect hyperbola has a Hill coefficient of one, um, negative cooperativity less than one, positive cooperativity more than. And the sigmoid nature of the curve and the Hill coefficient suggests marked positive cooperativity and usually people interpret this as aggregation so the compounds aggregating in the assay as the concentration increases and whatever particular uh whatever particular um aggregate the compound inhibits that becomes more prevalent as the concentration goes up so you wind up with a sigmoid relationship can i quick question yeah the, is is does the Hill coefficient tell you anything about whether your molecule is a covalent inhibitor? No, um, it can tell you under certain circumstances how many molecules are actually involved. Uh -huh. um, so, for example, the classical case is hemoglobin and oxygen and this, with a Hill coefficient of four. Um, but uh, in this particular case, no, no, I'm afraid not. OK, thanks. Um, Another sigmoid uh, inhibitor, uh, M23, um, with an IC50 of just under 100 micromolar. And now things get a little bit better. So this is compound M17 uh, from one of the, another one of the enamine plates. There's a nice hyperbolic relationship between inhibition and uh, compound concentration. Hill coefficient is 1.3 plus and minus 0.3, so it probably is close to one. Um, and if you are looking for something that probably has a single type of interaction and that you might want to take forward, that will be a candidate. Similarly, um, compound MO8, uh, this has a much more attractive uh, IC50 of 25 micromolar. Um, that basically is in the region of what we were seeing with JO6 previously. Uh, it means it actually binds tighter than the standard inhibitor we use in our assays, which is ADPCP. Um, and again, that will be something that I would earmark if I wanted to take things forward. And finally, um, compound A19. Um, Hill coefficient of less than one, which in principle would suggest it's binding in under a mode of negative cooperativity, which means binding of one molecule dissuades binding of another. Now, given the accuracy of the data, that may or may not be the case. Um, it has a fairly high IC50. Uh, I wouldn't eliminate it from consideration, but 
um, it may may not be the top of my list. So we've got another uh, six compounds to chew our way through, uh, which I should have done by the end of this week. I apologize for not having them done, done today, but we'll have the data uh, soon. And that's kind of where we are at the moment. The plan really is to then take the compounds, the attractive looking ones, and then progress them through the other ligases and uh, see where we are. Oh, and also one other thing we have to do is we have to repeat these measurements in different ATP concentrations to determine the impact of ATP concentration in IC50, because what we really, really want is an ATP competitive inhibitor. Right. And that's, there we are. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, just a quick question. So um, solubility of these compounds has not been a problem? Um, well, if I go back, let's think. Yeah, so actually the compound in front of you, the graph in front of you now, um, that will never actually reach 100% inhibition. Um, the fitting right. will only take you to around about 75, 80%. And the reason for that is quite simply that the compounds do crash out at very high concentrations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah exactly, exactly. Um, and then we have the, um, and this is a fragment library, so we are obliged to use as high concentration as we can. Yeah. Um, so quite often, from a practical point of view, you're sort of looking at the data and having to uh, chop off large amounts of the top end simply right. because you're just getting noise, simply because you're getting so much light scattering. Um, of the data I've shown you, um, they, they those compounds do appear to have the solubility required for me to do the interpretation apart from this last one where I've only extended the data up to uh, one millimolar because two millimolar was a complete disaster. Okay. And a second question, if you can go back up a slide. Okay. Yeah. So just a quick question on the, so this motif where you have a, a heterocyclic ring, like the one on the left there, yeah, and then a sulfur atom and then a CH2, usually next to, a, usually next to another aromatic ring. Yeah. This is a motif which is a little bit at risk of, of being a, a something which traps nucleophiles. So it's an electrophilic site. Yeah. Where that that unit, the aromatic ring with the sulfur, is is a decent leaving group because the S minus essentially is you know able to be stabilized by the ring next door. So there are some medicinal chemists who say you know you've got to be really careful with structures like this, that they are promiscuous. I guess one answer to that would be: Is it the case that there are molecules? in this set, which have that exact motif, which are not active? Um, I'd have to look back through my data. Okay. Um, I would say that these compounds have actually gone through two different sets of assays and they've come through. So there is some selectivity associated with them. Although yeah. it can also be said that we had to adopt a second assay to get this far because we did have issues with um, off-target activity. Right, right. Okay. Uh, you, well, I'll, I mean, and, okay, I just want to, I guess I'll push, not, not push back, but off-target yeah. activity was, let's just say, interference with the assays we're using. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so, yeah, just some people might take off-target activity as like a toxicity or something like that. It's not necessarily toxicity, it was just interference with the S, the reagents and and binding to the uh, you know some of the reagents you're using in the assays. Anyway, go ahead, Chris. I mean, uh, Matt, sorry. I mean, so Joe, you, some of these compounds were designed by you, right? Yeah, these were all part of Becca and my efforts on the virtual screen, yes. Yeah, I mean, did you, I mean, I guess you didn't filter out that compound. You're not concerned necessarily about that because Presumably there are. Well, no, I, no, I, we were, I, I guess, uh, we'll put it this way, maybe just naive if you want to be uh, harsh about it. I mean, we didn't, we didn't filter. I, I'm sure we filtered some uh, uh, reactive things. Uh, yeah, pains, pains probably stuff. like cor, you know, cor, uh, cor sediments or you know, yeah. things like that. It probably got filtered out. But this particular one uh, obviously did not get filtered out, and it was probably just because we, you know, that particular chemotype or was not was not uh, 
yeah so no, yeah i think i mean it's definitely it's definitely uh you know would be a concern there i mean i guess this question becomes you know like what are the various whether it's in the mirror ligase pure mirror d i really have looked to see what cysteines are there for example and mm -hmm. then then the other question would be obviously all the reagents that are in the assay itself you know are any of those going to be yeah. something that would uh be a good uh good target for you know this basically uh, clipping off the uh the amino thiodiazole yeah well, i mean what one thing i could do for example um the assay system at the moment um is insensitive to the addition of thiols which the amplex red assay wasn't so i could repeat the assay in well i don't know 10 millimolar dithiothriotol um and if the inhibition suddenly disappears then that might be a clue yeah right yeah 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 that'd be good that'd be a good that's that'd be a good experiment yeah yeah but also you know it, it, in in the whole set of the of the molecules if there's a way of clustering by similarity and finding them you know the molecules that are most similar to this one and seeing whether they also are hits then again it just gives you some faith as to whether this is just a, right. a promiscuous class or whether actually we're, we're getting binding of this compound right. it doesn't necessarily matter if it's covalent right but we just need to know yeah i mean the, the other thing to remember and i have to keep on reminding myself is that these are fragments and because of that the expectation that they're going to have selectivity is probably a little bit ambitious I and mean, in fact right. experience shows that that's most certainly the case right. um and the selectivity that you require and you want is going to be engineered subsequently based upon what the molecule is and what the molecule will become Mm -hmm. um because this of course is the first step of a work in progress yeah so i mean you know there's there's you know if you look at this molecule itself this specific one and, and actually all, most of these in this set of 11 many of them you can look at and see that there is kind of the adenine mimetic <laughs> in there um you know so this amino pyrimidine bio pyrimidine uh core I mean, obviously, that's you can see that as part of kind of probably in theory, that's what's supposed to be mimicking the adenine portion. And then the thiodiazole is kind of going into where we are hoping like some of the phosphate binding uh, spaces. I mean, that's the rough thing. So I guess the one comment, uh, Adrian, no, I, 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 uh, I'm glad you pointed out two things. One, the hill slopes. Uh, clearly, uh, those are red flags. Um, I guess the only other thing is the, you know, which you also addressed was the solubility issue. And so while some of the compounds, I think I don't know the, the first, the earlier ones where you're only getting like, you know, 70% inhibition, like you said, they're basically crapping out as you get these higher concentrations. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're, I don't know if I would necessarily deprioritize them. Um, I just think, you know, you're not, you, you, they, they may be binding, it's just you can't tell you know, these higher concentrations and getting a good curve. So anyway, what yeah. will be interesting to see how they look and maybe in, in, against the other the other uh, isozymes. And do you see any kind of, uh, you know, if you start seeing at least some level of multi-targeting, then maybe that will at least uh, maintain some interest in them, I guess, put it that way. Yeah. yeah. This, this, is, this is great to see, you know, uh, thank Clearly, yeah. this is a, a lot of work to get, you know, these these curves and these assays. So we greatly appreciate uh, your diligence here. That's all right. Definitely. And and you mentioned that there were a handful of compounds which the remaining IC50s. Correct. There are six more to do. With six, well, more. six more that have been done, but I haven't actually processed the data yet. Okay. And amongst no those, it, there are some interesting ones. I mean, you know, we, we would obviously hope to try to um, take the most promising compounds and again, do a little search for what's commercially available yeah. um, around those compounds that so we pick the, the best. But, you know, as with any fragment project, the next step might be to take the best and try and get structures, crystal structures of them bound to protein. Is, yeah. is that, you know, feasible? Um, Laura has seen this. Um, she's, um, and we have chatted about actually progressing these things. I mean, the other thing that I'm also going to have to do is order in fresh com fresh samples of these 11. Um, simply, bits, simply for uh, just...
to be sure about what we're looking at. So to make sure that there's no batch to batch variability and so on and so forth. Mm. And also, uh, we are running out of some of the compounds in the enemy library because it's been so heavily used. So um, oh, we will be ordering in fresh compound for crystal trials and also to extend the enzymology further. Okay. Um, question. Um, am I right in thinking we've got 40 compounds coming our way? Also. Uh, um, there were compounds shipped to you last month. Yeah, I have them. Okay. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm late. Hi. Hi, Laura. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, yeah, that's a mixture of the, the, the clusters around the existing hits um from this and from the atomized compounds and it's um ed's final compounds for the competition and then it's yi Wei's six or so compounds that she finished synthesizing okay so, yeah that that reached about a month ago yi Wei's handing in in about a month or so so we were very much hoping that there may be data on on those just for her thesis um she'll update you in a second what else okay. she's doing in the meantime but yeah those are with you i think all right, lovely. Okay. Right. Shall I stop sharing now? Thanks. Great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Really good. I, I was going to, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely, I just, um, as, as going forward, I think one of the things, uh, Adrian, and, and I, I understand you definitely probably should try to prioritize some of the UCL things, uh, especially if people are trying to get their thesis. Uh, uh, written um, but at one point it'd be good to go back I think we need to test the AZ compounds um, the original ones that, that were, we got from AstraZeneca uh, in your assay uh, because there's you know clearly there's I'm going to call it there was a disconnect right between what was published in terms of potency because of different you know different assay conditions so at least at some point having the relative values of these fragments versus in your assay, you know, what, what are the AZ compounds actually that were published that were supposedly nanomolar inhibitors? I think you were seeing almost like a thousand fold difference. So at some point, I think going back with, now you've done all this validation of your assay um, to run the AZ compounds. So we have, when we publish, which, which we obviously want to do, we can publish, you know, okay, this is the data for those AZ compounds in our assay. And this is what the fragments look like. And so we can, compare those yeah I, I remember this the, the, the problem we had if i remember rightly was that the enzyme concentrations we were using were quite high um, um so we'll be using sort of sub micromolar concentrations as in you know 100 or so nanomolar and the potency of the, these things was probably 10 20 nanomolar in the az assays so it's something we've got to go back to um See, yeah, I was just saying that's that's this at some point that's a I put on as an action item, but again, it doesn't necessarily have to happen next month or whatever. I mean, it's just it's it's something that as we look forward to even grant applications yeah. and publications, I think having and also I, I know Chris said that he had gotten uh, inquiries from AstraZeneca itself, kind of wondering you know what what had happened with those compounds they donated to us. So yeah. just just to put it on the on the action item list at some point yeah thanks okay um i saw a paper just before the meeting that's been circulated about adding positive charges to improve permeability it's the paper that was just sent around by uh way i think um there's another paper a much much older one from chris walsh's lab where they've chain where, where they've inserted ornithines and arginines into the sequence of an antibody called tyrosidin, which is a gram-positive targeting molecule, and it extends the spectrum quite nicely into the gram-negative. So I'll circulate that just in case it's interesting. Uh, yeah, please do. Um, yeah, Yu, Yu Hang is, is his current targets are taking the AZ compound. Um, so I'm jumping in for you, Yu Hang, just because this has come up now. Um, and if you remember, you know, we, we've sent the, the amine compound, so, so changing the OH here in the original compound to this NH2, mm. which appears to be effluxed out, but, but Yu Hang is, uh, is still in need of a, of a 
of an IC50 against the, the purified enzyme for that compound to see whether it actually works. Um, but the next step there is, is to play around with these guanidinium and pyridinium groups to yeah. see whether or not we can use some of that idea to, to improve things. Yeah. So yeah, this is uh, his, his current target list mm -hmm. is, is this. Okay. Yang, did you want to say anything about that or it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Yes, yes, I think it's pretty fine. Uh, I'm fine with it. Uh, also, we, uh, we we have formed up the first draft of uh, seasonal carb. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a sec. Just one second. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, so this is, uh, I mean, essentially, once once we've ex we've explored the OH to NH2 conversion, the primary amine, and then we've explored the introducing charged groups, then uh, you hang as a complete piece of work that we need to publish because we've tried to we've tried to improve the AZ compounds directly and mm -hmm. we'll see if it works. But these are all the strategies that we can think of, I think. Okay. Um, and then since I've got the screen share, um, Yue's posted this update of um, what she's been doing on one of the atomized compounds. So uh, Yue, a few, a few compounds were sent already as part of the last shipment, which you've not shown here, but that's fine. Uh, do you just want to explain what you've been trying to do here? Um, yeah, so I've designed a few molecules that has a uh, lower C-log P, which um, hopefully would resolve the solubility problem of the phenolog. Um, yeah, so, so these are predictions. Yes. Right. All right. So the the green ones are new that you've made, and the orange ones are coming. Yeah. Okay. Great. So yeah, an attempt to play around with the structure a little bit to improve the solubility. These things are really quite brick-like, and so Eway is trying to trying to improve matters. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, in addition. So Zhao Hang's on the line, I think. So yeah, Zhao Hang's doing an MSC project over the summer and um, has been making some molecules here that are intended to be additions to the AZ compounds, but in a different quadrant. So to in line with, with Joe's original idea here of growing the molecule in another direction um, to, to make more productive interactions with the phosphate binding part of the, of the protein. Um, so, so these subunits here that, that Zhang's trying to make are, are part of that project. So yeah, he's he's uh, making quick progress here on making some useful groups that we can add onto the molecule, quite nitrogen heavy. Um, and uh, and yeah, so uh, Yuhang, did you want to get, just give a lightning update on the CC4 car proposal? Because obviously we're trying to uh, get money to um, progress that chemistry a little bit. Yeah, did you sure. were you able to share and just give us a, just a very quick glance at what you've done? I will, I will share this for you. Joe, we're going to be contacting you offline after the meeting about this, but but you has been making lots of progress on getting a proposal together. Uh, so this is how we gonna. Or th this is the uh, this is for our proposal. Uh, we'll firstly introduce okay uh, uh, why we're gonna make this pro uh, this compound and how we're gonna change it uh, briefly. Then we illustrate the rationale. Uh, the first thing is like, okay, the AZ inhibitor series are like uh, appearing to have consistent binding modes uh, with Pseudomonas originals mercy. Uh, and these are the supporting uh, crystallography data, uh, sorry, crystal structures that we did overlay to illustrate this manner. And the second thing is, uh, the second thing is, uh, the uh, I there's a helix appearing. Uh, there's a helix appearing to be pretty consistent, sitting in the position among uh, different uh, different MERS from MERS to MERS F uh, and across different species. Uh, therefore, we were thinking, okay, we we can target on this uh, uh, helix by growing our AZ com uh, AZ structures into this pocket. And then after this, we 
uh, let me, okay, is that better? Yep. Yeah, after that, we just, I just compile the whole rationale, uh, why we're going to change this bit, uh, or we're going to change, how we're going to change these two positions, uh, in order to target on the helix, uh, whether, why we're going to keep these two nitrogens to, uh, to still have the key binding interactions with the residues in the ATP pocket. Uh, why we're going to change this part, uh, this part, whether we uh, need to cut it off or we need to, uh, uh, try different, uh, electron density distribution, uh, and also why we need to cut this off to, in order to avoid the, uh, potential, uh, star uh, clashes with the, uh, helix from the central, uh, from the C terminal, uh, so that's basically the rationale. Then we've done the, uh, uh, yeah, so this is one of our examples that uh, we designed based on all these criteria, and we did the kind of constraint docking to illustrate, okay, uh, how, how the in, uh, interactions can be improved across. Um, oh, sorry, there's a mistake here. There's a mercy and murdy. Sure. So uh, there's a mercy, yeah. So uh, there's an overlay of mercy and murdy. So it's kind of like, okay. Well, we do get a huge improvement in adding the uh, hydrogen bondings uh, around this area while still keeping the core sitting where the AZ compound was sitting and having that key interaction with the uh, uh, with this. Sorry, let me see. So larger. Yep, it's great. It's great, yeah. So, so yeah. The, the so what we'll do here is is send this around to you, Joe, to, to have a look at because obviously this follows up on a on a design session yeah. you you yeah. led when we were talking about. Oh, then that comes to the problem like we need to confirm with our kind of Warwick team so whether this is doable, uh, anti microbial testing is whether we have the enough resources to set it up or any other suggestions like any other suggestions on setting up the experiments, any other testings we need to involve so that we could uh, make the proposal complete. Yeah, so just to remind everyone here, this is a proposal for chemistry done by others. So we're, we're requesting chemistry resource, um, but the molecules would need to be tested in some way, and we have to provide a, a, a suggested way that we would do that. So once we're happy with the proposal, and we, we're going to need to talk to you guys at Warwick about, about how much we can commit to that, and, and if we can't commit all the stuff, how we might come up with a solution for testing the molecules that they make. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's a conversation that needs to involve Chris as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. But Yuhang's done a huge amount of work on this already, so we'll yeah. we'll get that to you, Chris, uh, to, to you, Joe, and we'll we'll progress it to a point where we can submit. Thanks yeah, very much, Yuhang. It's great. Yeah, huge, great, yeah. great, great, great job. Um, all right, so uh, I've got to run for a train in ten minutes. I can I can hand over the meeting to somebody else, but I wanted to make sure everyone else had a chance to talk. Laura, did you have anything you wanted to to talk about? No, I don't have more updates. Only that I'm getting ready to do the um, experiments with the new compounds from Adrian's cool. uh, new hits. Um, cool. Yeah, and I'll try that and see if we can get some structure with those. Great, yeah. So now some already with like nice uh, curves and hill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, the, uh, yeah, structure would just transform those, right? Because then we'd be sure where yeah. the line and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I'll keep trying that. I'm preparing for co-crystallization and uh, also um, soaking. Right. I'll try everything I can. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. Thanks. Really good. Okay. All right. Great. Um, was there anything anyone else wanted to raise? I think we've covered the important things. Yeah. Great. I think we we have a, yeah, the next meeting is early August. And I think I've just got time for that before I'm going on vacation on the 13th. So mm -hmm. I can be at the next one before the summer break. Nice. I'll be there too. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Thanks yeah. very much. Great to see everybody. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Great. Thank you. Welcome. See you Thanks, soon. everyone. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye.